Joining us now is DeSantis surrogate and former Oklahoma congressman and NASA administrator Jim Brennan-Stein and here in studio GOP strategist Chris Lenzo and business and political commentator John Burnett. Thank you so much all for joining us. Congressman, I want to start with you. So DeSantis has reportedly been planning major changes for the DOJ and FBI, including a new FBI director on day one and cutting 50 percent of federal agencies inside Washington. Talk to us more, more about these plans. Well, I think overall the idea is we need to restore the confidence of the American people in the justice system. And I think given what we've seen where conservatives seem to be treated differently than Democrats or liberals, and, and we've seen Ron DeSantis fight on these issues going back to my days in the House of Representatives when he was on the Oversight and Government Reform Committee. And we had in those days the IRS was targeting conservative groups and pro-life groups. Ron DeSantis was on the front lines working every day to try to make sure that the IRS was not targeting conservative groups, but instead equally applying the law to everybody. Um, and as governor, we've seen Ron DeSantis remove state attorneys who weren't enforcing the law. I do think Ron is the right person, um, given his background as a, you know, a Harvard Law grad, a JAG officer, an assistant U.S. attorney. I think he's got all the tools and the and the understanding of the agency to do the reforms necessary yeah. to make yeah. people confident in the justice system again. Yeah, John, do you think that this is a good campaign strategy? Because, you know, a lot of people saying, you know, what, how can he separate himself from President Trump? What's his lane? Well, first, full and fair disclosure, Jim and I are business school classmates. Yeah. I love Jim. Now I know why Jim hasn't responded to my phone calls and text <laughs> messages, because he's actually a DeSantis surrogate. <laughs> love you, Jim. The thing is, is that, you know, like you mentioned, he, uh, the governor is, just like the other candidates, are struggling with trying to find their lane. Mm. What lane do they take and try to establish to distinguish uh, their campaigns from, uh, from President Trump? It's going to be tough. It's a tough task. And the thing is, you know, while I respect you know, uh, Governor DeSantis' uh, service to the country through the military, uh, the work that he's done as governor and his time in Congress, as Jim pointed out. But, you know, if he did a, such a great job, you know, uh, going against the swamp, the swamp got worse. Yeah. All right. I, I want to give you some, some time to respond, sir, to, to what your friend uh, John had to say. No, I, I think he's right. Um, you know, Ron DeSantis has a long history here. He has uh, reformed institutions inside the state of Florida. He worked on that when he was in Congress with me. I do think uh, Ron DeSantis has all the tools necessary to give people confidence in the American justice system again, which has been lost over the last five, six, seven years. Um, and, and certainly, uh, I want to be really clear, Ron, Ron DeSantis understands uh, that the allegations here against President Trump are serious, but it's also true that the application of the law needs to be fair. Your previous segment with with the, the stories about Hillary Clinton and bleach bit and destroying devices with hammers, all of that makes everybody very concerned about the equal application of the law. Yeah, absolutely. And I think they have to, you know, these, all these candidates have to decide, you know, where they're going to, to go with this Trump story. Are they going to, going to stand by him, even though they're running against him, um, because of what's happening? It's not just a particular person. It's what's going on with the government. All right. I want to pivot now to the Federal Reserve announcing its policy decision 2 p.m. Eastern today to decide whether or not to raise interest rates. They're saying this could be a game time decision, Krisha. I mean, they've raised interest rates uh, multiple times. We've talked about it. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to happen? So they they are calling this a uh, hawkish pause, so to speak, which means that they are set to pause their rate hikes. They've had about 10 consecutive rate hikes at this point in time, and um, they will not raise rates likely. Um, the market is pricing that in. Um, but going forward, they potentially will. Um, in July, July 25th, 26th, the next Fed rate hike a meeting, it'll be about 25 basis points likely. Um, but this basically puts uh, the overnight bar or the Federal Open Market Committee borrowing rate at five to five and a quarter percent, mm -hmm. which is what we expect. Int uh, inflation rates are coming down and clearly um, people are acknowledging that and All the right. Fed's looking at that information. All right. 15 seconds. John, what do you think? <laughs> well, I think Jim would agree with me. The fact that, you know, the Inflation and Reduction Act is not didn't actually do its job because yeah. if it did its job, the, the Fed wouldn't have to continue to raise rates. Yes. Yes. So we need to get these Democrats out of office. Jim, just quickly, do you agree? What do you think is going to happen today? 
So I think absolutely when we think about, you know, why the interest rates have been going up so so quickly over over the last, you know, couple of years, the answer is federal spending. When Congress create when Congress creates this much debt, we have to finance it. How do we do that? Well, the Federal Reserve creates cash and the Treasury creates bonds. You take the newly created cash, you buy the newly created bonds. Yeah. Um, nobody has their taxes increased. Nobody has their spending cut. But now we put a whole bunch of greenbacks in the market, and, and that devalues the U.S. currency, and it results in inflation. Um, Congress is at fault here. To be clear, Congress is at fault here. Yeah. Um, and they need to get spending. control of federal spending. <laughs> All right. Jim, for Good to see you, Jim. Chris Alenza, John Burnett, <laughs> thank you so much. Great conversation. All right.